Hi everyone, it's Keely. Welcome back to another video. I am being somewhat consistent all of a sudden. Um, today I'm going to be painting this wonderful, I believe, 12 inch uh, treckle wooden panel that I got. Um, but yeah, before I get into all of the, you know, fine details, I want to just talk briefly about the materials that I used. So again, got this panel at Treckle. It's a crystal ball cut. It was one of their seasonal um, October ones that I managed to snatch up. Um, to transfer my sketch, I used Sorol transfer paper in red. Um, I'll talk more about graphite transfer paper in a minute for all of you wondering. Um, for varnishing, I used this big brush from Blix. I don't think it's branded. Um, for varnish, I used Gemvar Gloss Varnish. Um, this is my first time using it. Um, I'm not going to talk about my specific paint brushes because I use so many, there's not really any point. And then I also used acrylic gouache from Holbein. I have a bunch of colors here, but I only actually ended up using four of them. Also, say hi to Pumpkin. She loves attention. Um, I only ended up using four of the colors that I had there, which I will have listed down in the description box below. This was my first time using vast majority of these materials so I wasn't really sure how this was gonna go um, most of these things I did end up really liking a couple of them were like subpar but didn't ruin anything you know they did their job they just weren't necessarily my favorite product which I'll talk about in a little bit um, but to transfer my sketch which I did digitally um, I used the Sorrel transfer paper unfortunately um, my printer that I would normally print this sort of stuff on with the, um, with normal just printer paper only prints up to eight and a half by 11. And this panel, like I said before, I believe it's maximum, it, m like longest point is 12 inches. So obviously that wasn't going to work. So what I did was I divided up the sketch in Procreate and then I printed two separate halves of the paper and then taped them together and then trimmed them to fit the panel, if that makes sense. So... Um, yeah, that's what I did with that. But so I used the Sorrel transfer paper, which you saw me there using there. Um, you can make uh, like sort of a substitute for transfer paper at home. You just take your sketch, flip it over, and then rub either uh, a graphite pencil or maybe charcoal or uh, sometimes a soft like chalk pastel will work. And then you flip it over, lay it on top of what you want to trace your sketch onto, and then trace the sketch, and then pull it off, and you normally have your uh, sketch right there on your on your surface that you're hoping to paint or, you know, finish in some sort of way. So that is normally what I did, but I had gone, I had seen these uh, panels through Treckle, bought them, and then I went, hey, like, I think I need to probably re-up re some of my uh, traditional art supplies that I had had because I don't do a lot of traditional art anymore as a lot of you guys know. So I had gone to Blix and picked up this transfer paper because what I normally did was I used the uh, charcoal method where I'd flip over my sketch, uh, color the back full of charcoal, flip it over, transfer it. That works technically so if you are in a pinch or if you don't really want to go out and buy a whole new uh, tool to do this particular task, that will work just fine for you and it will get the job done. But I do have to say that it is kind of messy, if I'm honest. Um, I find that it does not have as clean of a transfer. It smudges, it moves, and it just typically is like a little bit more difficult to deal with. So if you are capable and if this is something you think you'll get good use out of, I would recommend transfer paper. Um, I chose red graphite. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. I have a cold right now, guys. Please bear with me. <laughs> um, I chose red graphite paper because I normally do my sketches in red, um, be that digitally or traditionally or whatever, just because it makes it easy for my eye to differentiate between the the sketch layer and whatever color I'm using to line typically. So using gray or blue for me is typically just like a little bit harder. So I just generally speaking go with red in most cases. It has a pretty good contrast with most other colors that I typically line with, but that's entirely up to you. It comes in all sorts of colors, so just choose the one that works best for you. But um, yeah, I actually really like this transfer paper. You can see the sketch was really clean, and even though I did run my hand through the paint a couple times, the actual sketch did not move. So that was pretty handy. I would recommend this. Um, but so I got these panels from Treckle. If you guys um, don't know, Treckle is a art supply store slash company. I actually don't know if they have any physical stores. I don't think they do near me at least, but um, they definitely sell online. So during the month of October, they had their seasonal um, specific 
panels out and available to purchase. They do a different seasonal batch. I, I want to say around like most major holidays, like there were some Christmas ones, which I didn't pick any of those up because they just didn't speak to me, but I grabbed a bunch of their um, Halloween collection. So I have a bunch of those that I'm sitting on that I'm very excited to use. So you guys will be seeing a lot more videos from me doing traditional art with those panels because I want to paint them up. So I think I'm going to do a little series on here. I'm not sure what I'm going to call it yet. I'm sure it's in the title or in the um, thumbnail by now. But I, yeah, I want to do a little series on here of using up those panels because I have like six of them. I bought so many. I, I bought way more than I should have, but I just got so excited because they were shapes that I had never seen before that I'd always wanted. Um, and I mean, you can cut your own panels. I just do not have the tools or skills to do that. So I have never done it. But if you do, I mean, go for it. I'm really, really jealous of you. Um, but yeah, so I also was using holding acrylic gouache for the first time here. Um, I have other Holbein gouaches, just their normal, set, I think it's like the set, set D or something. The, it's a really bright, vibrant colors, and I generally really like gouache, um, and I had heard people rave about the acrylic gouaches, so I chose to buy some. Uh, I only bought a couple because they are very expensive, and my asshole was puckering as I was purchasing them, but I do really like them and I think that they worked really well for painting panels. There's kind of a learning curve for me personally just because I don't know maybe I'm, I just struggle bust with every new thing I have to learn but um yeah there's a little bit of a learning curve but I think I can get a handle on these and I think I'll probably be purchasing them in more colors because the ones I showed you at the beginning of this video were the only ones I bought so it's clearly not a full comprehensive set of colors but it was enough for me to do a couple of paintings that I had the color scheme already picked out for. So um, acrylic gouache, yes, love it. Um, oh, I also forgot to mention, but I did prime this canvas, which is new for me. Um, I used uh, Liquitex Gesso, I believe, and that was wonderful, worked great. Um, the one product that I used for the first time in this video that I was not so much of a fan of was honestly the varnish, the Gamvar varnish. So I Again, I have not done a lot of panel painting in my art career. Normally when I do traditional art, it's typically on watercolor paper. So I don't usually have to worry about priming and um, varnishing my artworks. So I had picked up a Gamvar Glarnish. Glarnish? Why do I keep calling it Glarnish? Gamvar Varnish in gloss. Um, I had picked it up from Treckle when I ordered these panels just kind of not really knowing for sure what I needed, but I did a little bit of research and it just seemed like a safe bet. I varnished this and I'm not really impressed with the finish that it gave. I don't know if maybe I'm doing something wrong or what, but um, yeah, it just wasn't really my favorite product. It did the job technically, I suppose, but it just didn't have a very high gloss finish. It was specifically called gloss varnish and so I thought it would have a much glossier look when it dried down and it's this particular painting is on my wall at the moment waiting to be listed in my shop which you can go have a peek at because it will be up by the time this video is up but um yeah it just didn't really have a very high gloss finish so if you guys have any panel um like wooden panel and gouache compatible varnishes that you really like that has high gloss let me know I would love to try them I have some art resin um, that I may be using, but I don't really know if I want to uh, risk that f quite yet. I'm afraid of ruining things with it. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I will be posting more videos soon. They may not all be art related, so keep an eye out for that. But like, if you guys are interested in extracurricular content from me, I'm sure you will like these upcoming videos. Um, thank you so much for watching. Again, I'll have all of the materials I used to make this piece listed down below. And if you have any questions, just let me know, comment them down below, and I will do my best to get back to you and answer, you know, any of your guys' inquiries. Um, so yeah, if you'd like to pick up this painting and give it a new home, the link to my online shop will be down below. And yeah, thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye!